Hi everybody, <laughs> can you see that smile? Can you see that smile? <laughs> I did something so awesome and I just want to share my experience with you and just like talk about some of the things that I have noticed that are maybe uh, a little bit sketchy uh, but uh, okay so if you know one thing about me you know how much I love dogs and, uh, and nature so if there is an activity that includes dogs and nature it, it's almost as it's it has my name on it you know I have to go and try and uh, I am talking about the husky safaris in Finland a very uh, very common thing that a lot of places offer here is that yeah you can take the huskies and you go and ride with the sleigh. <laughs> Chuck is here. Hi Chucko, say hi Chucko. And and uh, and I wanted to try it for the longest time and, and now I went and I did it <laughs> and it was it was the best experience of my life. It was so much fun you guys. I just like ne never wanted the day to end when I went on the first safari and it's just like it's just unbelievably awesome experience but okay let's back it up a little bit so there was a friend of mine who told me that the businesses in Lapland uh, the husky businesses are really struggling because of corona because there are no tourists from the outside basically and that has really hit them really hard and uh, and uh, he made this campaign to help, try and help the huskies and uh, and he was, yeah, he was saying how a lot of huskies are uh, being put down uh, to, to sleep uh, because the owners just can't afford to have them and to buy food for them and all that. And and that <laughs> obviously touched my heart because you know how much I love dogs and and just to hear that and and I went and I told my told my brother about it. Have you heard about the huskies and how they are putting huskies down? Uh, because they can't afford them anymore and, uh, and my brother was like uh, yeah but that's not, not anything special they put them down anyways when they're too old to ride and I was like no they don't that's not possible like stop it and uh, <laughs> and so I went on the internet and did my research and it does come out that a lot of husky businesses in Finland Put their dogs down when the dog is too old to run because it doesn't produce any more money and obviously it's it's uh, costly to keep them uh, keep them keep them on the farms to feed them and obviously older dogs need more medicine and not more doctors um, doc doctor visits uh, so 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 I really like uh, looked it up and and read so much about it and <laughs> And it, it, it is pretty sad what came out. Okay, so it started to snow so bad that I had to go and change the, where I was because the lens get covered with snow and you couldn't see me anymore. But I was actually in Lake Kelpisjärvi, which is a very beautiful area in Finland. And behind me was the most famous mountain of Finland, uh, Sana Mountain. And I was supposed to go and climb that uh, mountain, but there was two days of snowstorm basically while I was there. so. <laughs> so I didn't go, I went to sauna instead. <laughs> what you gonna do, right? Um, but now I am actually on my way back and look at this view. I mean, so incredible, right? Like this is such a beautiful area. Lapland in general is like so, so beautiful. I'm just like, <laughs> I can't believe my eyes. And, um, and, and yeah, okay, so what happened? Um, I found out there are only a handful of husky businesses in Finland that have a no-kill policy, which means that once the dogs uh, are old, that they will not kill them, but they will either let them live in the farm until they die, or they will try and find new families for them and, and uh, adopt them. And so I did my research and I found this really cool uh, husky farm called the Hera Huskies. And, uh, 
and I just read about the ethnics behind them and how they treat the dogs and and it just fa seemed like a perfect place for me to go and do the safari because I would hate to give my money and support the businesses that are not treating the dogs right if the dogs are the ones that are the business and and that do all the work right so I did go there uh, to Hera and it was freaking <laughs> I can't even like I have no words for this experience it was just like so much more than what I expected and and it was so so unreal it was so beautiful and I'm just like so thankful for that experience and and I want to encourage everyone if you have a chance go and do the husky rides but just make sure that you pick a business that really takes good care of the dogs even when they are old and and are not needed in the farm any, anymore but uh, but who deserve to have a good uh, last years of their lives anyways um, so <laughs> I went to the two-day safari and stayed at the farm at the at the night so I could really see inside of the farm life and see how how the dogs are treated and how they are everything that goes behind the scenes basically and I think that is the way to go because then you really get to know the get to know the huskies and get to know um, the farm and and I think it adds so much to the experience if you actually do the farm tour as well not just go on the ride and this way you can also make longer safaris which are so much fun so uh, we <laughs> the first thing that I like really notice is like the dogs love to run so much like they they live for that and there is no doubt in my mind that they love to do that and they are having so much fun while doing it because when you're picking out the teams who are gonna come and run with us everybody wanted to go so there are 200 dogs there but everybody was just like begging to go and and when when they understand that you that we are picking the teams and picking the dogs to go with us they all get so crazy and they're like pick me pick me basically like barking and jumping up and down and they are just like so excited and they want to come so bad and there is no doubt that they just love this so much and so we picked teams and and put the harnesses on and and you can see they can't wait to go out on the fields to run already and so the first 200 meters that they take are insane like they are so excited for life that they are just like going full speed and it's like the most dangerous <laughs> part of the trip I feel like just to have them uh, run out of the farm because they are really like barking so hard and they are just they just can't wait to get out and it, uh, that just really shows how much they love to to run and and uh, and pull the slates so so uh, but once you get on the open fields, they, you know, <laughs> they get really quiet and they're really focused on their, what they're doing. And and, uh, and it is the most breathtaking thing ever because the, the landscape up here is so beautiful. I know I say it all the time about all the places that I go, but it is true. It is so freaking magnificent uh, over uh, out here. And, and when you go and you you drive over the frozen lakes and then you go inside the forests and 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 it's just like pure wilderness there is no no signs of humans being there and that is really something really special i feel like in 21st century you have really this vast area where there is no human touch and and no houses and and just just pure nature and and there is the snow is still so thick that you couldn't see this like you couldn't go and walk you know or you could you could basically go ski but you, ski in that area but like to do it with the huskies it is so much fun because you get to see so many different landscapes and you know it's really hilly also like they have like mountains up here so it's like really like it, it, it it's really different all the time and and then in the valleys there are the lakes that are like huge and then you just like go go through the lakes and and it's just like i don't know i just it was such a beautiful experience and i'm really like i think it's the best thing that i have done in in uh, finland and i think it's even better than the northern lights i would never thought i would say that but when you're watching northern lights they are magnificent they're the prettiest thing that you have ever seen they're so powerful make you feel so small inside but you are just a spectator, you are just standing there watching that. 
you know. But with the Husky Safari, you are not a uh, just a spectator. You are a team member. You are in control of the Huskies, and and you are interacting with the Huskies, and uh, and I just feel like that is so powerful. Like, and that's a, such a great experience, you know, because you you actually have six dogs in front of you, and uh, and you have to make sure that they are okay. You have to break at the, at the right times, and and it's it's really like. It's, it can get quite extreme as well, you know, because they are not, they are not predictable. They are, they are dogs, you know, so like if they see a uh, bird, for example, or an animal, for example, like something can happen or they can get off track for some reason. And, and you have to be really good with like having the thing under control. So, you, so it's like kind of makes it really interesting. Like I definitely fell over two times <laughs> because I didn't uh, pick the right speed and, and you know, things happen. So it's like kind of like a little bit extreme, but, but in a really fun way, I feel like. It's a very, very exciting adventure to take. And, uh, and I really, I really saw how much the dogs love that, just to be up in, in the nature. And then, and then when we go, went back to the um, farm, you see how, how well they are taken care of and and you have no doubt that they are living a good life there and uh, and and they are happy dogs you know and 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 the people who work there they really are dog lovers and i know that they wouldn't work there if if uh, if if the dogs weren't happy there you know and 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 places like hera like the dogs always come first and then comes the business obviously you have to make money to be able to have this kind of uh, husky farm but you never compromise on the well-being of the huskies, you know. And 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 I felt uh, I felt really good to be able to give my money to them and support them because I think they are doing the right thing. Now I don't know why the hell in Finland there is even a possibility that uh, the farms are just killing the dogs after they are too old to run. I think that's insane because there is no reason to kill them. They are still. They're still living beings who 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 want to live and who are who could be someone's pets, you know, or or it just doesn't seem humane to me to do this. And I understand that we live in a capitalist world and man, money talks. And whenever there is a way to make money, there are gonna be people who are gonna take advantage advantage of that and who are gonna who are gonna not care about the ethnics behind it and and just want to maximize the profit. Uh, for money and uh, and and so the dogs suffer and and they are not treated very well and and maybe they are not getting the right medical treatment or they are not getting the right food or right exercise and the right treatment after they are done with running. So I really encourage you to do your research before you go because uh, you don't want to. Do you want to support uh, a farm that where the dogs are not happy? Um, and uh, but but if you find the uh, one that you feel okay going to then it is the most fun experience ever it is i just don't have enough words even for that and uh, i really really recommend you do, uh, doing that and uh, and the dogs that are old for example in hera uh, they are looking for the new families if if they don't find new families then the dogs are can happily live in the farm but uh, but if you would be interested in seeing what kind of dogs they have uh, for adoption right now, then you can go ahead and I will link in the description uh, their website so you can go and check it out for yourself. And uh, and maybe you can find yourself a good good friend to go through the life with and, and offer a soft, um, soft path to an old dog who is... They are literally the cutest and the most... Uh, nicest dogs that I know. I actually uh, took one of the dogs from the farm because uh, I'm helping to transport one of the dogs to his new home and I'm so excited. We have a little peanut with, a, with, with us. He's a 12 years old uh, puppy, puppy, dog, and uh, we are transporting peanut to his forever home because uh, peanut uh, goes where I have to dr drive anyways. So we just took peanut from the car, uh, from the farm and we put it in the car and he's uh, chilling with Jack waiting us for me. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, keep driving. I have a very long way to go. Okay, so we went and uh, chopped off peanut. <laughs> I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> I mean, it's such a beautiful thing when people adopt old dogs. Like I, I it's such a, um, uh, 
topic that is really close to my heart because you know I got Jack from rescued Jack and, and Jack has been such a good dog to me and I just love dogs so much and when I see people adopting older dogs it just like melts my heart so much because it's so easy to love a puppy or some people it's easy to love a flower who doesn't love a flower right right but like everybody who sees a puppy puppy is such a beautiful cute little thing you fall in love with it right away uh, but then a lot of people once the dog <laughs> grows up they would it's not cute anymore and and it's a lot of work to, uh, to take care of the dog and they would uh, they would get rid of the dog um, and then the dogs would go to shelter and it's hard for them to find the family because everybody wants a young dog and they want a puppy who is like really cute and easy to love <laughs> but I don't know it's just like warmed my heart so much to think that you know that that dog is probably have, gonna have like only a few years left to live and then you're like I know and it's gonna be a lot of money to pay for the medicine and uh, take it to the vets and uh, and all that but uh, I just feel like it's such a beautiful thing to offer them a warm home and a soft uh, bed where they can be <laughs> old and retired and just just live out their days until it's their time to go and I just these kind of people who go to the shelters I'm not crying you're crying <laughs> why am I crying <laughs> who, who go to the shelters and take dogs who would never be picked who you know who were old and sick and who would who would probably live there for the rest of their lives I think these people are heroes they're my heroes if you're one of those people you're my hero <laughs> okay stop crying I'm stop crying I'm good Peanut this is in his new home and that is such a beautiful thing that Harold didn't put Peanut to sleep but like allowed him to have a beautiful happy life for, uh, for the last days of or years of his uh, life and there is actually a group for uh, dogs who have been adopted from Hera and, and they go all over the world and, and you can see them like really living a good life and, uh, and, and uh, having a wonderful time with their owners and the owners are also thankful so you know it's not like you're helping I always say that with Chuck I rescued Chuck from going to shelter but Chuck has rescued me more times like she has given me so much emotional support I don't know how would I have done without him you know <laughs> and I feel like it's the same way with even like the whole dogs like they give you so much unconditional love and it's just a beautiful thing okay so besides adopting a dog you can also sponsor a dog a lot of husky farms offer a program when you pick a dog that you're gonna sponsor and then they're gonna send you for example a picture and then weekly updates how that dog is doing and some stories and 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 uh, so you can really like keep up with the dog and uh, you have a dog but he just lives in Finland in Lapland <laughs> I think it's such a cool idea as well uh, you can always just donate if you don't have money you can always just go on their social media and like share their posts and like and comment and because you know that will help their post get longer more awareness and and more uh, reach more audience and and that can help too and that doesn't cost you anything um, and then let's go back to the beginning like okay the husky farms are struggling the 90% of their income used to come from people from outside of Finland now that is all cut off obviously they're struggling but the, you can't just be, put your dogs in hold you know they need food they need uh, medicine so if there is a farm that you feel like is ethnical and who takes good of care of the dogs and you feel like you're okay with supporting them um, then please uh, do do that if you have the resources and and I was telling you about the lady who was saying uh, who brought this whole uh, issue to my attention this lady lives in Hiyoma the island in Estonia where I lived she's such a badass woman I just love powerful women who who make their own lives like like we build up stuff like it's so funny so many food producers in Hiyoma are, are women and we have like this organization that gather us all and and it's so cool to see powerful women who grow local food and uh, and and give uh, give uh, jobs to other people and I don't know it's just a badass thing for, to see to do for me and so this lady he goes and she grows organic nettle and then she takes the nettle and and uh, grinds it into powder and then makes products out of the sprout powder and she actually has a husky on its own so you know <laughs> from dog lover to dog lover <laughs> she obviously is touched by this uh, subject as well so she decided to make a campaign with her products to support the huskies so she has actually made a um, design 
to his products with the Huskies. First of all, can we just say how beautiful is this packaging? Like I live for that. Um, but so every time you buy these products, uh, she will donate a little bit uh, to one of the Husky farms, Era Sushi Rusky, uh, Husky Farm in Ruka. They already stopped running because there was not enough snow, so they already ended their season, so I had to go up to north. Um, but they also have a no-kill policy in uh, Era Sushi, so I am all, <laughs> all abroad to supporting them. And, uh, and this, uh, I really believe in these products. I use them on my own. I know exactly where they come from. Yes, this is uh, sponsored like I, she sent me the package, uh, pack, uh, the products, but I'm not getting any money if she sells anything. Uh, but I really do want to help the Huskies and I, I believe, like I said, in these products. So inside of that is actually a nettle powder. Uh, and it's, it's, um, it contains a lot of iron and it contains a lot of pro uh, protein. It's, it's such a cool idea because nettle is considered a weed and a lot of people try to get rid of nettle from the yards. But it's actually such a superfood and it has so many good things for, for people. So, so it's such a cool idea that you take something that is considered a weed and make a superfood out of it so, so that you can provide people with healthy food. Okay, according to the EU law, you can't give health benefits uh, uh, to your products, but this is not my product, so I'm sure like I can talk about it like I just had this problem when I was talking about honey I can't say that honey is healthy or gives anything Healthy even though people have believed that for thousands of years, but this is another topic for another day <laughs> But this okay, so this This nettle powder you can put inside porridges you can put it in salads You can put it in omelets you can put it in smoothies and and just to boost your uh, boost your uh, food and uh, make it more healthy and it contains a lot of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, just a immune booster for uh, in my mind. And for me, example, I need a lot of protein right now, so I add it for my porridge in the morning. Um, and then there is this really cool energy bar that has this nettle powder inside. And okay, I have eaten too many of them in my life. <laughs> like I used to buy them all the time and just put it in my car to have like a really quick snack because I was a beekeeper and I would go out and forget to eat. <laughs> I would be so busy working with the bees all day. And so I had them in my car and they saved my life so many times. It was such a quick and tasty snack to take and I don't have to feel guilty for eating them because they don't have any added sugar. They're really, uh, they're all organic. So, but now I can't eat them because they have oats and I can't eat gluten, but I love them. The taste is so good. And uh, obviously the nettle in it. Um, but the thing that I love is that they are actually not hard, they are smooth, so they are a little bit moist, you know, because energy bars sometimes are really hard and I don't really like that, but this one is actually like, has a really good texture for me and it's super tasty, so I'm just, I'm just saying that uh, I used to buy them all the time, so that's why I, I'm feeling okay with like talking about this and uh, she also makes this tea with nettle this is a, has also heather and two other plants. Um, so this tea, when I drink it, I rem it reminds me of summer in Hiuma. Midsummer, light nights, like I'm running in the field with Jack. The field is covered with flowers, you know. The nature is just like so abundant and all the birds are singing and it just brings me right back to the summer, no matter what time of the year it is. And it's such a good tasting tea. So all those three products, uh, you can order from their website. I will link it in the description below. And I really, um, this is just the one way to support, to support the Huskies, but also support the local produ producers in Hiuma and also get a really good product out of it. So um, this is my recommendation. Um, but also, like I said, there are so many things we can do for the Huskies. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for listening. I want to say this, my opinion, I'm the type of person um, my opinion is not set in stone. If I get new information, I am, I am okay with changing my uh, opinion. You know, because some people, I feel like, they believe something and they will believe it no matter what. If you give them new evidence, they will still believe it. <laughs> but I'm not like that. I love, I, I actually love to hear, I love when people don't agree with me because I love to hear different per perspectives and different approaches and different views from people. And, and I think that is so enriching and I love to learn. So if you, if you have anything um, that 
I you think I said wrong about the Huskies or or if you have just any other things you have noticed about the ethnics behind it or if you just had some kind of really cool or really bad experience with the Huskies safaris please let me know I would love to do to hear them because it's such a fascinating topic to me and like I said it literally was one of the best moments of my life like I was so happy when I was out there I was just it was just one of those moments when you almost want to cry because it's just so beautiful you know the the whole ride in, in itself and, and interacting with the Huskies and and it was something, it was just incredible and I feel like anyone who has a chance to do it, uh, I'd really recommend it because I will remember this for a very long time and I am sure that I'm gonna go on uh, new safaris next winter or whenever I have a chance because um, it's such a beautiful thing to do and the dogs really love it. I feel like it's not us taking advantage of the dogs but the do we are just cooperating with the dogs. The dogs love to do the ride and... and uh, we pay them with shelter and food and medicine and, and providing them with a good home. So I don't feel like it's animal abuse, like I know some people would say that. Uh, but it's um, it's a corporation, it's the same as a human would go and work and he gets uh, money <laughs> for his work. You know, I don't see much difference uh, because the dogs really do love it. There is no question in my mind about it. They live for that, and uh, and if it's an ethical business who takes good care of the dogs, I think I think it's uh, it's a very beautiful thing, you know, and uh, and and especially to go with the lapis uh, nature and wilderness. I I just can't I just can't think of a better combination, you know. Uh, so yeah. Thank you again. This is a long, long video, I know, but it's just uh, I could actually sit here for two more hours and talk about all the awesome things that I noticed in the farm, how well they were taken care of. Did I even notice that the dogs, not every dog gets along, so they actually have like, they are, they are keeping, uh, keeping records who, which dog is friends with which, and then they are trying to make dogs new friends because they can't put two dogs that don't get along on the, uh, in front of the sledge because then they would fight. So they are like actually have this whole society there and they are trying to make new friends like it's it's such it's like another world and and I just loved living that life for two years two days two years yeah I wish <laughs> maybe that's my um, dream job to go there yeah but it's, it is a hard physical work for the staff I could see it takes a lot to take care of them the right way so I have all the respect for them because it is it's a lot of work that goes into that, especially when you're talking about like really strong dogs, and you have to, you have to take care of them. So all my respect to the people who work there, and and yeah, thank you Finland, thank you Lapland for this beautiful experience. I hope the laws change soon so that the dogs will not be able to sleep uh, if they're too old to run, and and yeah, let's vote with our money until that. Uh, give our money to businesses who do it the right way and then the ones that don't do it the right way will die off, right? In a perfect world uh, that would happen, but <laughs> I don't live in the clouds. I know it's gonna probably not change until the laws change. So maybe talk to our politicians. Hmm. We should look that into that. But anyways, okay, I'll go now. Thank you for being here. A million things you could do in your life and you decided to stay here and watch me talk about the Husky businesses. I really appreciate you. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Okay, this is a friendly advice to you if you are going to Lapland. Watch out for the reindeer because they do not care about the cars. Like, I was driving back and this one herd of reindeers, they would not move. Like, just, just watch out. It's really dangerous.